This video is kindly brought to you by Simple Retro, a women's clothing brand founded by vintage lovers. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to another video. Today my voice is kind of going if you can't tell already and I apologise in advance for any croaking. I went to a concert yesterday evening with my sister and I screamed so much that my voice ended up going towards the end of the evening and so please do excuse my voice but today I have a cosy reading vlog for you all where I take a trip to a cafe, I unbox some new books and reading said books but I'll also share some snippets of me welcoming spring into my life by pressing bluebells from the garden and making some fresh iced tea. A couple of weeks ago I ordered three books from Waterstones and at the end of last week I received the third and final book that I'd been waiting for. As you can see, I purchased The Easy Life in Kamusari by Shion Yura and you'll see me reading it throughout this vlog, but I really thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. Simple Retro were so kind and generous to sponsor this video and I've been really looking forward to sharing some of the pieces that I received with you all because I think they're so, so beautiful. The first piece is the Molly Knitted Vest and I've been wearing this non-stop ever since I received it. I've been wanting a knitted vest for about two years now and so to finally own one that is as delicate as this one is such a dream. Next is the Shea cardigan and I honestly think I'm going to wear this all the time during autumn. Look at how rich the brown is and the embroidery details on the Peter Pan collar is so sweet. This cardigan hangs so beautifully and it's lightweight enough to be able to wear during these warmer days too. This next item I have is the Faith blouse and I can't stop admiring it how thoughtfully designed this whole blouse is. The attention to the ruffled collar, the lace and the embroidery all down the front of the blouse, not to mention the adorable lace edging on the sleeves. It makes me want to wear this and walk inside a bookshop or a library and just fully embrace being a bookworm. I'll attach a photo here of how I'd wear it closer to autumn, but for spring and summer I think I'll enjoy wearing it with some light blue jeans or with the blouse unbuttoned even and a cami top underneath it. And last but not least, I have here the Convalaria top, I think that's how you say it, but it's giving the cutest grandma core vibes ever. Lily of the Valleys are some of my favourite flowers and I love that they've been embroidered so prettily here on this forest green blouse. The material is actually quite refreshing on the skin and so I'm excited to wear this by itself when it gets a little bit hotter outside. Of course, I have a coupon code for you all to use, so if you type in I10 at the checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. Thank you again so much to Simple Retro for sponsoring today's video. Sorting out the herbal tea that I purchased from a tea shop in Bath was on my to-do list this week and so I wanted to take the time to film and share it with you all. Loose leaf herbal tea is my favourite kind of tea to drink and one of my favourite things about it is how you can see the different individual herbs and flowers and so I wanted to store them in glass jars where I could see them better. If 
if you watched my bath book shopping vlog, you might remember when I visited the tea house emporium and that's where I picked up this good mood and memory tea, which is really a blend of lemon balm, lemongrass, oregano, rosemary leaves and lavender flowers amongst more incredible ingredients. From the Tea House Emporium, I also picked up the Mint and Rose Tea Blend. I knew that I wanted a more minty kind of tea as well, and so when I saw this in the shop with the rose petals, I knew that I wanted to try it for myself. Whenever the sun is shining, I gravitate towards more refreshing drinks, and so I've been making iced tea lately. But this was my first time brewing the mint and rose tea blend, and so I was super excited to know what it would taste like. I can confirm now that it was really refreshing, if not a bit too refreshing for me to have during spring, but I'd love to save it for those really hot and sweltering summer days. I've mentioned before how I like to match the sticky tabs I use in my books to the colours on the front cover and lately I've been enjoying creating a custom set of tabs with just a few of the colours that I want to use and it's meant that I don't have to carry out a whole bunch of other colours as well.
on Saturday I didn't have any other social plans and so because I had to drop off a package at the post office I decided to spend a couple of hours on the way in one of my local cafes to just read and annotate Emily Bronte's poems. Unfortunately though I forgot that the post office closes at 2 o'clock on Saturdays and so I wasn't even able to return the package but I did have a lovely time sitting and reading at the cafe. I ordered some honey plum tea for the very first time. Usually I go for the honey ginger tea option, but now I want to go to my local Korean supermarket and buy some gulbe shicha because I want to be able to brew my own honey plum tea at home. I love seeing signs of spring in our family garden. The apple blossoms on our apple tree are finally budding in pink and dreaming about the flowers in full bloom makes me giddy because it's a truly magical sight. I've also been really glad to see the robins and bluebells return and I wanted to see if I could try to press some of the bluebells this year. I did this two years ago and I still have it framed in my room, although I'm not sure how well this year's will turn out because the stems were pretty thick and I did have half a mind to dry them instead, but we'll see how they turn out. I fell in love with Miss Newbury's List by Megan Walker when I first read it in February and I initially read it as an ebook via Libby so ever since I finished the book I've been wanting a copy of it physically I'm so happy that I managed to find a second-hand copy of it through Vinted. 
And whilst you can definitely see the signs of use, I'm really glad to have a copy of my own now and to be able to give this book a home on my bookshelves. throughout this week I picked up an easy life in Kamas Hari whenever I could and I'm really happy to report that I think it's become one of my comfort reads now. For me personally there can be a difference between a five star read and a comfort read and I like to categorise a comfort read as any book that I want to come back to time and time again. Usually it's because I want to spend time with the characters and revisit their world. On the other hand, I have five star reads that I don't necessarily feel the need or even desire to revisit, maybe because of how heavy the book content is, or perhaps it's just a really, really thick book to get through. All that's to say that whilst The Easy Life in Kamas Hari wasn't a five star read for me, it did make me feel so at ease. The slow paced slice of life story following Yuki and his life as a forestry trainee in this mountain village was so quaint and I loved getting to see the vibrant personalities of the villagers too. It was a little different to what I'd expected or even hoped that the book would be. I certainly didn't expect it to have the same sort of crude humour as the growing pains of Adrian Mole possesses and it surprised me to read the numerous rude and sometimes even vulgar jokes made throughout the book. But its luscious forest setting deep in the mountains of Japan, the folklores and customs of the villagers in this small village, as well as witnessing Yuki mature and find purpose in his life was altogether utterly charming. I will say that it sometimes reads a bit like a non-fiction book about forestry, so that's something to note if you're planning on reading the book. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I'd love to know what some of your favourite comfort reads are and I hope you take care. Bye friends!